hey people one more day of being banned from my channel so I picked me a new avatar here but I found these two old books uh, cool old books one called the first steps of German idioms and they're really helping with ancient language you know an idiom is a, a group of words established by usages having a meaning not deductible from those of the individual words and like terraining cats and dogs you know it it just means that it's a it's huge raindrops it's coming down hard and and you can see the the meaning in the Teutonic here you know the identification the ID to make see from it doesn't mean it's giving you the identification but if you know if you work yod to work you can see from it and it's uh by the reverend a.l becker and they're both uh free books are over a hundred years old i found them on google books and i saw that he was the author of the first german book and i went looking for that and i found another book it's called school education and uh you notice that there's this this symbol up here and everybody just looks over it as a divider but it's a Coptic symbol and it has a meaning to it you know Coptus is the ancient language of ancient Egypt and that's why it's on the back of your dollar bill that the the rulers are still ruling and they put these secrets so they can read them and people that don't know don't understand them what the meaning of these symbols are I study many of these ancient letter meaning charts. You know, most of them, they have all the Hebrew and the Phoenician letter meanings the same, and all the other ancient symbols the same line up. But in the uh, in these Coptic signs, they'll have some differences. So I study many of them to try to figure out, you know, the, the same as the people who are making these were trying to figure it out. And uh, I find this symbol here as the chair back. And it's often called the S, you know, and this is one of the S's. There's another S down here above T, the Shin. This is the S that means secrets. And it's plainly telling you, you know, that the secrets of the Coptic. You have to read between the lines to get the secrets of the Coptic out. You know, they call it a chair back. And that helps. You know, they got this S before the the T in the Hebrew this is the the 21st letter and this is the 22nd letter and so it lets me know that this is the S that was actually here between the N and the O you know and they have it as a, a chair back and so this letter S you know for the chair back is the secrets and that's why you sit on the back of the throne all the time the secret draped over the back of the chair so I believe this secret is, you know, in the punctuation and the capitalization, how it changes meanings and reading directions. But it doesn't mean that the writer of this book understood it. This, this first, he writes the book, and it goes through the editor, and then it goes to the printer, and they're the ones that place this mark on here. And so after he edited it, where if you understand the Coptic, you can get the truth out of it and uh, and the writer doesn't even understand why the edits take place some of them they just let it go they want to get their book printed so I haven't even made it farther than this in this book yet I was just wanting to share with you I uh, like I said I was looking for a different book when I found this you know but theirs is not to make reply or to reason why but to do and die and this really doesn't even need any perspective. I knew what it was saying when I read it, but I went to back to see where, where it was from. It's in the chapter of, it's in the first chapter of docility and authority in the home and in school. In the fundamental principles, one of the first efforts of this reconstructive thought, which is building us once more a template for our spirits, a house not made with our hands, is to restore authority to its ancient place as an ultimate fact no more to be accounted for than is the principle of gravitation and as binding the universal in the moral world is that our principle in the 
natural fitting of, into that of authority as the ball fits in the socket to make a working joint. You know, ball in the socket, it can go all the way around, it just doesn't go in and out. It thinks it has total freedom, but it never thought about trying to go in or out. When it comes out of socket, you find out, ooh, that's not the direction you wanted to go. It's the other universal in the element principle of a docility. And upon these two hang all possibilities of law and order and government and progress among men. Mr. Benjamin Kidd in his social evolution has done much for the recognition of these two fundamental principles. Why a football team should obey its captain and army its commanding officer. Why a street crowd should stand in awe of two or three policemen. Why property should be respected when it is in the many of who want and the few who have. Why? In the word there should be a rule and not anarchy in the, in the world. These are the sorts of questions Mr. Kidd sets himself to answer. He turns to reason for her reply, and she has none to give. Her favorite argument is the appeal to self-interest is final, that we do individually and collectively whatever is shown to be for our advantage. But when the company went down into the royal gorge standing at attention, because that was that was the word of command when the 600 rode into the valley of death because there's not to make reply theirs is not the reason why theirs but to do and die just do what you told the subtlest reason can find no other motive than the single and simple one of authority acting upon docility these men had been told to do these things and therefore they did them that is all and that they did well we know our heart is the witness we speak of such deeds as act of hero heroism but it is well to notice that these splendid displays of human nature at its best resolve themselves for the most part into the acts of obedience to the word of authority the abuse of authority gives us the slave and the despot but slavery and despotism could not exist except that they have, are founded upon elemental principles in human nature. We all, we all have it in us to serve or to rule as occasion demands. To dream of liberty in the sense of every man his own soul govern is a futile as to dream of a world in which apples do not necessarily drop from the tree but may fly off at tangent in any direction. So if you read the Samic, you know, to dream of liberty in the sense of every man, his own soul to govern is a futile as to dream of a world in which apples do not necessarily drop. You know, there's two kinds of people in the world, and it's not to serve and to rule. It's not the servers and the rulers, you know. But we all take turns in, in that position. But it's the ignorant of and the knowledge of. And about 99.995% of the world is ignorant of it, you know. There's just a couple at the top with the knowledge of it. And they're controlling everything. And if it were not for this, if the people knew, you know, that they wouldn't be a street crowd standing in awe of two or three policemen. And property wouldn't be respected. And there would be anarchy in the world. And that's why they'll, they'll totally blow up the whole world. They'll kill everybody and everything on it before they ever let the people know. And it's happened before, and they still use the same name. You can read about it in the Samson Option. And that's the same thing they called it before. And that's why they built these great pyramids that could withstand any kind of explosion and force. And look into these seed vaults and reckon why they doing that. You know, they know it's coming shortly. The people are going to figure out there's going to be anarchy. But that's what this is. It's ancient seed vault. You know, the walls, or it's not a silo. The walls were a whole lot thicker than the, the rooms inside. All they needed to hold was seeds. DNA and seeds. And it's futile to try to wake anybody up to this. Nobody's going to get it. And if you try to write a story and leave it for the people in the future, you know, they're just going to change the language. 
you know, futile, incapable of producing any useful results, pointless. And they say somehow they got that from the Latin funder, you know, foundry, to, to pour metals into a mold, a foundry, to pour. And they somehow they got feudalist leaky connected to that and feudal, you know. Fused legally, apparently from funder. And so they just got to change the word. All you could do is learn the ancient picture language and understand it. Because sometimes somebody in the future is going to go back and think about those pictures and what it would really mean. And they'll put the language together. And then you can write your story in, in that language. Because they're just going to change the language again. So how I ran into this other book. You know, I was reading that Ephesians 6, I think it was. And I was searching for a word using more places to better understand it and I found it at the end of this Matthew 20 the parable of the vineyard workers and as I was reading a couple lines I seen that I wanted to come read the top of this and so I got down to the second line the first was pretty difficult to read and the second line starts with the symphony as you know the symphony as having agreed which that's what they say you know the symphony is come from the word having agreed you know, the, the sim, S-Y-M, you know, a sin, S-Y-N, is to synchronize. And a sum is to add, add up the sum of the phones, of the sounds, to add up the sounds as. A symphony is, you know, we're, we're both going to have our word in this and add it up and we'll make an agreement, you know, the sum as as it added up the sounds as and so maybe that's the same word for symphonies as all the sounds together or maybe it was supposed to be spelt with an n and it means you know to sync to synchronize the, the sounds symphony and maybe that's some secret knowledge they didn't want us to know you know there's some ancient writings about how they move the huge stones how the monks moved huge stones with drums and singing maybe they had to synchronize the phone you can see here they say symphony is derived from the Greek word symphony meaning agreement or concord of sound but here they say you know a symphony is an elaborate musical composition in the origin Middle English from old French symphony via Latin the Greek symphony from some phonos, harmless from sun, sin synchronized, together synchronized, sun, sin, sound. And so it's actually two different words that they got it mixed up there. But it's this, the symphony as the metatoner gotten. And so the, the metaton. You know, meta is from within. You know, they're trying to change it to mean with change, morphous is change. But no, meta is from within change. Because it's a metamorphosis. It's when a, a transformation process from within. And, uh, and they changed the meaning of that word. And I remember looking it up 10 years ago, and that's what it meant, is from, from within. And so a meta you know from within to tone a metatoner gotten you know the symphonies of the metatoner gotten gotten you know, that's the word for cat most places in Europe have gotten the cat of dinero and so I went back up to the top to get this down and I see this jar all the way through and it looks like you know to our rest in you know the the homo is you know like the same as a homo the homo jag are resting but i went to searching for it as the garrist and that's what ran me into this book of idioms and i see this word idioms all the way throughout the greek and the hebrew in the hebrew it says and he knew idi the you know the ayah the hand or and he knew 
and it's hard to make these letters out. You'll have to, to read several of them sometimes to figure out which letters these are. And so these are uh, these are French idioms that are put in English and then an, in German here. And so this is a, a Kessel. And so the boiler, boiler exploded as their, their damps and the Kessel sprang. You know, as a Kessel or a Kettle. And here, here's a good one. You see, I always pronounce that Y is how or who. You know, W-I-E is how or who. But this book has three different parts. And, uh, and this is why I'd run into the word that I was looking at. I, I saw this. But this is that word, fron. This word is, is very old in the old high German, frano. and meant belonging to the Lord or master. And uh, a couple movies ago, I showed you where the, the serpent, it was the wisest creature in the garden. You know, the wisest creature in the garden, the most skilled was the, the Froni Montados from, from Fronio. They say it meaning nephrono, being belonging to the Lord or Master. So this book has three different parts to it. And it gives another picture of the fall. And you know, as a verb, it means to fall in with one's wishes. Hence, to please. The fallen English. And it'll show some of the connections to the, the Greek words. So this is what I wanted to show you was this hall and fetch, hauling, as in English, hauling, and it has its representatives in all Teutonic languages, you know, two to shape the tonic, the tones, and the, and the I-K would be in the, uh, in the Greek, as in like, the tone-like, to shape the tone-like, and thus the Dutch is the hauling, the Danish is the hail, Swedish and Iceland, the holla, English, the hall, and it has even been adopted by most of the Romance languages, French holler, Spanish holler, port holler, and so, um, you know, the languages, the L, the, the, is the tongue, the tongue on, the L, the tongue on gauges, the tongue engages. A language, a spoken language, is when the tongue engages. So that tells me if somebody was engaged in communication in a sign language, it wouldn't be called language. And you can see here in, in the Greek, you know, the call in, K-A-L-E-I-N, to call together, to call, E-Y, they in, to call they in. And so the, both Bibles are full of these idioms, and that's why you can't, you know, turn words. They might interpret one, but you can't move those words for the next one, the next time that word comes up. In the last part of it, it'll have uh, all these test questions. It'll give you ten ideas, and then it'll give you one, one of the words that, that, that that's representing. Because, you know, birds of a feather fly together. And you come down and see, you know, that's a click. You can see the, the tug, tet, the th, tug, and, you know, th, the tet, u, is, is to, and to carry, to carry, tug. You can see a, a wise making, you know, is to make wise of, to make known. And they don't know where bon come from, bon or von. And you can see that it's spelt with the F or the V or the B. And so that lets me know that it was uh, originally the, the letter B, the Hebrew letter B. And some people were going by what they heard and didn't see it when they spelled it the Vaughn or the Fawn or Bon. And you can see here they give it the meaning from that time or from hence, hence forward or that you learn in your early and it's so they say it means from but it has to do with time and it's the word they give in the Hebrew for son the ben just the b-n 
you know, the B is in and, and the O-N is light. In light or in on. Other places they say it means of, as in the father's lineage. You know, you're of your father. Instead of from is of. You're from your mother. And so that would work too, you know, of that time. Of henceforward. Or that you should learn of your early childhood. And, uh, and the circumstances is um stand, you know, connected from stand. Where things stand right now, connected from stand. And they get that from this um, according to Grimm's Law, akin to amphi, equals ad, or circa, or circum. You know, connected from would be to add it up. And the connected from is like connect the cycles. You made a circle, a circa, or a circum, a circumference, as in stands, the circumstance. And you can see that Austern here, you know, the word in which the Anglo Saxons is Easter, has the same derivation with the later, from the name of the goddess of light or spring, in honor of whom festival was celebrated in April. So that's why the Christians put Easter on their calendar, you know, to make the Anglo-Saxons happy. And so if you was going to say neither hither nor tither, you know, we see her, hither, and hen is tither. And so her, here, you know, being in hand reach, it's here. Here you go. It's in, I'm going to put it over here in your hands reach. And tither is, means always away from the speaker. Not here or there. Near hither nor tither. And so a heller is the smallest copper coin of Germany. Quite out of use. Maybe translated by our English doit. And it was originally holler then holler. And last it became heller. The full word was first Haler Fenning, Haler Fenning, Penny, which they in medieval Latin translated by Daenerys Halensis. And so that's probably where your word hell come from. If you worked all day and somebody gave you a heller, you would say, What the hell? You know, that was the, the word at the end here, the Symphius, the Mediton. Her gotten of her gotten of dinero. So I'll leave you the link to both of these books. This is a cover they put on it, Harvard College. Jagman, the professor of Germanic philology. And they'll tell us that, you know, philo means love and logi is words, language, letters. But you know, Q-Y-L is what that spelling be. The file. Ology. You know, the study. The file study. I'm going to cut this off here. It's getting off work time and the traffic's awful and the noise is irritating me. I can't think straight. So I'm going to go back to reading and I'll make something. I'll make one tonight when it quiets down. Alright, good day.